a video about a circuit that I want to make, but it is only a project. So there's a lot to do, etc. etc. And the whole issue is a charger. A circuit that can charge a 24 volt lead acid battery. And this is the first unit that I made. I published it, um, say, a few days ago, anyway. And uh, this was also a project that was not very successful. I did not publish it anyway. And here the earlier showed uh, a regulator circuit that works very that worked very properly anyway. But I want to get more uh, energy out of the solar panels, and I want to use the effect of lead acid batteries here that you can charge them with a very fierce current. Of course, depending on the ratio of the uh, lead acid batteries, say it's a, a 50 ampere hour um, lead acid battery, uh, the good current is 5 ampere. And uh, you can use a quite sometimes a quite higher current but in that case you have to study the data sheet of your lead asset battery they differ there are a lot of different uh, lead asset batteries and study the data sheets of course we have the uh, the first charge and after that, when the battery is full, fully charged, uh, sometimes these charges start to switch to another mode. Say, uh, a kind of charge where a very small uh, current is sent into that battery. Anyway, that's good in a certain way because of the fact that lead acid, acid batteries can easily be damaged. Especially when the gas barrier is exceeded. And the gas barrier of lead acid batteries is 28.2 volt. When you get over that voltage, uh, send a higher voltage and current in at the same time. Of course there must be a there must be a current, the battery will start to boil or cook or whatever that will tear lead particles out of the battery. I've explained that in an earlier video one day or two days ago anyway. So here is the charger that I made that does not exceed the gas barrier. but. There's a very interesting thing regarding lead acid batteries. Uh, when they are uh, depleted, uh, they will take up a very high current. Of course, to the maximum of the, the typical value of that lead acid battery. And that means uh, when the 24 volt battery is completely depleted here, you can uh, send in the energy out of the solar panel uh, in its fullness. So, uh, full solar uh, and uh, 6 ampere at 84 volts that means that you can send in directly here 
through these two short key diodes. They protect the circuit in a certain way, I want to explain it later. Uh, the full charge goes into that 24 volt battery and there's no problem at all, but when the gas barrier is exceeded there must be a limitation of the voltage. And that limitation is here in my first setup. It's only an ID by the way. Uh, when the switch opens at say 28.5 or 28.6 volts the regulator starts to work and that regulator is made with MOSFETs two bridged and at the gate of these MOSFETs we have a Zener diode and that Zener diode limits uh, the current that flows into the 24 volt battery. But at the same time uh, uh, we have to uh, do with a solar panel so clouds etc etc uh, can occur so the current uh, will diminish will it go higher or lower or whatever and um, that means that on a certain moment uh, it's good to switch back to the to the MOSFET regulator that limits the voltage here to a certain value by the way interesting to tell there's loss here in the short key diode here and there's loss here in the other short key diode and there's a loss of course in the two MOSFETs or the one MOSFET that bridge uh, the current. They are on a big heat sink etc etc they get very hot and there is a voltage drop here in both MOSFETs and they will will get hot of course no problem at all but uh, when the switch opens the MOSFETs are active and it's a perhaps a good idea I don't know that exactly it will be my experiment to use a timer here that gives for instance uh, 20 minutes or half an hour and after that the switch here closes so that the full power out of the solar panels can get into the 24 volt battery. The problem with a, an accumulator, a lead acid accumulator is that it's a kind of sponge. So you, uh, when you add current and voltage to it the voltage goes up and when the solar panel doesn't give enough uh, voltage and current the voltage will go down and there is a quite of substantial difference on the uh, supply current that uh, supplies the charging of the battery the 24 volt battery so anyway, uh, I have perhaps to do uh, more experiments and and um, set the timer to a certain uh, time, of course. And it's only a first idea to make a properly working uh, solar panel charger for a 24 volt battery. So after say uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes the switch is closed again and the battery gets the full charge, the full load out of the solar panel. 
and when the voltage uh, again gets to the highest level that is 28 or uh, 28.5 volts uh, the switch opens again the relay contact opens again and the MOSFET is activated limiting the supply voltage to a very low level or to not a very low level but the level the level where there is no gassing inside the lead acid batteries and that's 28 volt or 28.2 volts 28.2 volts is the gas barrier of a 24 volt lead acid battery of course this circuit is only usable for lead acid batteries open or closed so don't use this circuit to charge a nickel cadmium batteries or whatever batteries especially no lithium polymer batteries uh, they can easily take fire when you charge them with this circuit so don't do that it's a serious advice anyway for people interested in a homemade uh, solar energy units this could be a solution and I hope to uh, publish the whole circuit within uh, say a few weeks uh, and how it works etc. I think this is a very good approach this is in my opinion a good approach because we charge the battery at first directly out of the solar panel protect it with the two Schottky diodes and when the supply voltage get critical the MOSFETs are activated and they will limit the current and after say a certain time we uh, go back to the boost modus but of course that boost modus does not have to be too long because otherwise the batteries will get severely damaged you will start you will hear them cook boil and that's a very very uh, big problem uh, and when a battery starts to boil it will be surely damaged within say two months or so uh, 